Hi all, let's continue looking at the Rapid Open in the final round. Hikaru Nakamura was playing against Vichy Anand. So Vichy had just beaten Mark Hebden in an earlier round, followed by David Howe in the last two rounds. So it was on a small winning streak. He had drawn with Sadler the round before that. Nicholas Pertz had beaten before that. So three British GMs been mowed down on course for this round 10 clash. Nakamura kicked off with B3, one of his favourites, especially for example when he won the ICC Open that was covered on the channel. He played B3 and B6 quite a lot. So Knight F6, Bishop B2, avoid the beaten track of tons of opening theory. Black now plays D5, this is the most popular move here. Knight F3, E6 again is the most popular move. So closing up the bishop here, uh, on c8, not minding that. Uh, now usually players with white often play c4 here, but uh, Naka played e3. We have uh, usually players are playing c5, because it looks as though d4 is kind of thematic sometimes, but bishop e7 was played. Now c4, we're transposing back into a lot of games here. There's over 300 games in live book from this position. Often players play bishop e2 now, That's that seems to be the main move, about 200 games, but d4 is also popular here. Black now played c5. Now usually knight c3 is played here, and it looks as though it's a fairly typical position where black might give white an isolated queen's pawn, say like this. Potentially, um, well, White doesn't have to have an isolated queen's pawn if it takes here, taking like this. These hanging pawns are, are their strength or weakness. It's about equal from an engine perspective. Uh, but uh, yeah, after c5, um, the move d takes c5 was played, opening up this bishop. Bishop takes c5, a3, and now we have d takes c4, queen takes, yes the queen's coming off, and symmetrical pawn structure. So it looks roughly balanced here, except white's bishops look a little bit more active at the moment than black's. Bishop d7, that bishop is sorted out now, potentially coming on this diagonal. King e2, leaving the king in the center, bishop e7, knight bd2, and now bishop c6. So black doesn't seem to have any apparently uh, bad pieces here. Rook hc1, knight bd7, king f1, and now Vichy plays knight e4, encouraging further exchanges. Does Vichy want a draw here? Knight takes, bishop takes. Now this creates imbalances and double-edgedness this next move. Bishop d4, it's offering black the opportunity to double white's pawns. How many of us would do this against Vichy? It's not just the double pawns, this is a bit weaker as well, of course. Uh, so in this position, uh, but you know, what else here? If if we play king e2, actually it seems this, this is not a pleasant position for white if king e2. On knight b6, the engines love this for black uh, to be able to play taking and then bishop d3. That's dangerous for that d3 square. If we try and contest d3, you know, there's a lot of pressure here. What do we do in this position? Do we take here? This is this is better for black. All of a sudden, there's a weak pawn on c4. Black looks to be doing very well here. This bishop can also go back to g6. So this decision here, it looks a little bit odd, but it looks more palatable than the alternatives. Vichy did go to double the pawns. Bishop takes f3. Maybe this isn't the best. It's, it's very tricky to evaluate these things, especially in rapid chess. Um, the engine's chess was a6, actually. If we have a6 here, um, knight d2, bishop can drop back. It looks it looks comfortable for black, either the bishop coming back to f5 or g6. It looks fairly comfortable. So this is quite a committal transition now with this bishop takes f3 structurally and in terms of imbalances. So White's temporarily got this bishop pair, which black takes away immediately with bishop f6. White takes, knight takes, and then the king comes to e2. Seems logical there. 
King F8. The evaluation here is almost dead equal now in a lot of different moves. It's, it's given a dead equal by the engine uh, stockfish. Bishop D3, Rook AC8. It's interesting here now that again, uh, okay, another exchange is potentially offered on, on the cards. Bishop E4, looking at B7. Black could, it seems, just reach a very sterile position now by taking on E4 and then something like F6. Very sterile. And it looks as if, any, if anyone's better, it seems you know, black might be a tiny bit better. Here, yeah, this, this looks as though uh, it's fine. Um, nothing to write home about for either side, really. Looks pretty jawish. But uh, yeah, tension was kept in the position. Vichy played B6. Now Nakamura tries to win that C file. He plays bishop b7, trying to maybe get a rook to c7 later. If he can win that c file, the infiltration point c7, we mean these pawns are threatened laterally. If we win this pawn, we get a past a pawn, for example. Rook b8, bishop c6. Rook d6 was played here. b4. Rook b d8. So now rook d2 check is annoying with black potentially whoops coming to b2 not a2 b2 and then f2 would be a problem so this using the file for lateral pressure is an issue for both sides rook c2 defending that knight g8 this might be a tiny slip up actually this was an opportunity where black could have played rook c8 wants to keep that c file away from white you could do this so here, here, the bishop being pinned. If one of the rooks gets swapped off, it's a dead equal, dead equal here. But what happened in the game now with knight g8? We see rook a c1. Uh, now, is this trickier? If rook c8, then white could challenge on that c file with bishop b5 or bishop a4. It looks as though there's going to be an infiltration. Control and d7 is also important. So that's not so easy, but here apparently black uh, could try something like rook d3 uh, just to try and distract a rook. If a4, yeah, this, this it's, it's a tricky position, but there might be sufficient play for black here. What happened in the game now? Pardon me, after rook ac1, knight e7. Bishop b5, white's kind of getting that c file. Rook c7 now is a definite threat. Uh, okay, there's there's rook d2 to, to be concerned about. But uh, rook d5, a4. Rook h5, that's the idea that h2 is picked, picked on. But this is diverting resources away from that infiltration on, on the second rank. Instead of this rook h5, it seems black might be able to offer some stern resistance here. Something like g5, forget about h2, if rook c7, then we can have the check and rook b2. If we lose a7 here, this is tricky, this is tricky. Uh, but rook takes b4 is on, on the verge of equality. This position, even though there's seventh rank pressure, check, check. We got a uh, perpetual check here. But uh, yeah, watch what happens now in the game after rook h5. Rook c7, we've got the lateral pressure, so we're converting the c file into lateral pressure. a7 targeted, so swapped for h2. Exchange of prisoners, as Nimzovich has written sometimes, where both sides are happy to have their weaknesses drop off trading weaknesses. But both sides have now created past pawns as well. We see knight d5. This might be a slight mistake here. Knight f5. Moving the pawn uh, I think is going to be problematic here with the doubling here because we control e8. And f7 is going to drop. So White's also got the option, not just his A pawn, but the doubling on the seventh is dangerous. So it's a difficult position. It's actually a significant advantage now for White. The engine's top choice is knight f5 
here. So rook c7, there's knight g3 check, mating free. Nice little trick. Uh, mating white. So assuming white spots that little trick. F4, this, this is good for white. Check here. This, this is going to be good for white. This position looks crazy to put a knight on h1. But that's the top engine line. It's just crazy. Uh, so that's how bad the position is. If that, if that is really the top line to put a knight on h1, that's not a good sign. So knight d5, white forces through the outside a pawn. a5, remember in a previous round? It was the A pawn which Nakamura beat the, the other super, super GM, Caruana. Remember the A pawn as black? It's got an A pawn as white. That must be reassuring to have this past A pawn here by force. Offering B4, it's no consolation if black takes it. Black took on A5. If knight takes B4, A takes. This is a mighty B pawn, B7. Yeah. So Nakamura is doing very well here takes takes rook h5 rook b7 the pawn is being driven through here very good holding this against any knight c3 and rook b5 tricks so knight b4 a6 this pawn can't be tolerated this rook is just way out of the action Vichy's in trouble he sacks the knight to get rid of the past a pawn. White's a bishop up. Bishop takes a6. The opening has been a great success. He just used the opening to get a reasonable position, Nakamura. And then getting that outside pawn. Now a bishop up. We have this continuation. Bishop b1, stopping rook a2. Rook c8. Rook h5. Rook a8, king f1. White's just improving the position a bit. Waiting a bit here. Here, now the option of other stuff now, like rook b8, maybe. So rook b8's change off a pair of rooks. Rook g8, g6, rook h8, h5. Now rook a8. And here, either Vichy resigned or he ran out of time. White is doing very well, nearly plus four from an engine perspective. How do we actually win this with white? Well, let's run through just an engine line from here after rook a8. King d6, bishop d3. How does white improve from this position? Go here. Let's have a look. Any constructive way. It looks a bit fortressy, so I'm wondering. Um, I don't think the engine is giving an answer here for how to win this. If I was playing white, I think I'd try and maneuver my king to e5. Let's just try this for sake of argument. King f3, g5. Let's go like this. It's king e5. Yes, this this is an example which actually works. So king e5, white's getting a bigger advantage now, getting this one. And then can take on f7, etc. So I think that that would be a way f for me personally to look at this position because the engine's not helping at all. Uh, for White to make progress, I think he's going to have to use his king. That that'd be a good scenario to use the king here, king e4. Try and get the king in, and if there's resistance there, well, the thing is, there's there's going to be mistakes because it's a rapid game and both players are getting really short on time. But um, trying to break through with the king. Uh, this position, it's going to be winning in the long run, surely, because uh, it's going to be more difficult for black to hold the position. Yeah, there's, there's scope for further resistance, but the engine evaluation here, for example, is, is over plus three. So anyway, yeah, Nakamura, yeah, just using a modest opening, he gets this outside pass pawn at some point. Uh, tricky position here. Where he doesn't mind the double pawns, his bishop here gone. But uh, I think there's something expert about this C file here. This bishop e4 it takes a bit of a gamble for further simplification. Black didn't take that, and now somehow White manages that C file quite well to get an infiltration and 
this trade of weaknesses is really in White's favour because White's got the option of the A pawn and the doubling on the seventh franc, which Black hasn't really. I mean, that's the difference. The A pawn is more significant than the H pawn, clearly. Black having to give up a piece. Now, yeah, this is a bit fortress at the end, so I was hoping for a clearer answer, but no. It's um, it will be a grind at the end. I think maybe Vichy either resigned, as I say, or lost on time. Okay, um, but congratulations to Nakamura. What a performance! Fantastic performance. Nine and a half out of ten in the Rapid Open. A fantastic display. I personally was very pleased to get seven, <laughs> and um, I was the only like one of the only I am non I am GM to 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 reach that score. I think there was one other person not titled. But it was a fantastic tournament to play in. And I recommend if it comes up next year, I think everyone on YouTube, if you can make it to the London Classic, make it. What a fantastic experience it was. So many people competing in the same open. All the GMs with the super GMs. <laughs> fantastic stuff. And uh, demo boards. It was a brilliant atmosphere. I really enjoyed uh, that the, both events. In fact, um, and uh, okay, I hope you enjoyed the coverage of these rapid games of Nakamura. Maybe we can look at some other rapid games. They're quite entertaining. Uh, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.